Welcome back everyone and I hope you're all doing well. It's pretty normal to recap our years here on YouTube. A lot of the other YouTube photographers do this where they'll make a video recapping their entire year, especially on a channel like this one where I take you along for the ride in a lot of these images so you might remember or reminisce about some of those stories. But this year I wanna try something a little bit different. Instead of approaching it from just talking or recapping 2023, I kinda of wanna look at it in a way of asking myself, what did I learn as a photographer? How did I grow as a photographer? And more expansion on that topic because I think it's something that a lot of us end up getting stagnant with. We're not necessarily learning new techniques. We're not really learning new editing. I know that is it for me is that it feels like I haven't learned a lot of new stuff when it comes to the technical side of photography. And a lot of it is just in my vision or my style has changed. So what I'm gonna do is we're still gonna recap 2023, but I hope that you learn something from this or take away something that you can approach for your own work to see maybe how you've grown from last year or the year before to now. So maybe this is something you'd wanna do or join along with and try it yourself. But we have to start by diving in and looking at a few of the images that I took pretty early on in my career. Now, a little bit of background because obviously I don't expect anyone here to know my work from this long ago or most of my work in general, is that I started taking landscape photography seriously or focusing on it in 2016. So the first images I have in here are from 2017 and you're gonna really notice my style at the time or how I edited things, well, let's just dive in. So the first couple images are from 2017 and you can tell there's a lot of saturation. This particular image, there's a lot of light painting and dynamics. I changed the size of Kirkafell here to match the size of it in person. I did a lot of editing early on. This is highly edited, this is 2018. Also pretty edited, 2018. And lots of saturation in here. This is actually, I would say it's edited, but it's not a ton of editing. But again, this is a very saturated image that just kind of really pops or grabs your attention on social media, for example. Also 2018, lots of dynamics here. This is four different exposures, four different time blending images, a lot of editing going on, a lot of editing in this image. I resized Mount Cook here in New Zealand to look more to scale in the image because my wide angle lens was distorting that. Moving on to 2020, again, same thing. This is a focus stacked with exposure blend image, a lot of editing, it's one of my earliest videos that I did. And then we move into 2021, but I don't wanna give away the fact that I still took images like these. I still take them now that we'll look at here in the catalog for 2023. But I started to branch out into other stuff. That's really what the point is. But I'm still taking saturated images. This one's far less technical than the rest of them. This is 2021 as well. This is also 2021, actually right around the time I took this image, a lot of saturation. This is a Pano 7 shot. A lot of technical stuff going on here to get everything to work right. In 2022, you're starting to see less editing and more telephoto style lenses. I'm bringing my clarity down rather than raising my clarity up. And my style definitely changed. And now that you've seen a little glimpse, like the tiniest glimpse of what my work looked like over the last six years, keep that in mind when we're looking through stuff in 2023 so we can really ask ourselves, you know, what was I trying that was new? What was I trying that was outside of my comfort zone? Uh, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And I think it's important because not only are we gonna get to recap 2023 for me and some of the images that I find as my favorite, but also maybe it'll point out things that you could try. Maybe you could branch out into different styles or techniques in your work and actually expand and learn in your photography world. Because again, I know for me, it feels very stagnant and I really pushed myself this year to do that. So let's jump into Lightroom and take a look at some of my favorite images from the year. All right, so I'm gonna go in chronological order here, but I'm not gonna have time to stop on all the images. These three images were all taken at the same time. This is actually one of my favorite images from the whole year, and I actually printed this in my gallery that I ended up having later in the year, mostly because it's a Florida image and the gallery was located where this was taken, basically in the same town. But I actually really love this image, and just this is the type of image that when I first look at it, I walked away from it. I didn't think much of it. But the more and more I look at it, there's just some, there's something about this image. There's just this weird glow to it to me that just feels ethereal. And this one has really grown on me over the last year because I took this very early on in the year. Uh, I also took this image at the same time, same day. Uh, this image also has grown on me. I actually didn't edit this. This wasn't uh, something that I put a lot of time into. And then when I ended up printing it for the same gallery that the last image was in, because again, Florida, and I was trying to target the Florida audience, this image has also grown on me, and it actually was the feedback that I got from people at the gallery. A lot of people were talking about this image. Now, obviously, they're from Florida, or they live in Florida, and this speaks to them more, but sometimes that feedback is really like eye-opening, because I can only see my work one way. I can only see images that I have one way, and sometimes I'll just be showing images to friends or peers, 
And they'll be like, wait, what's that? Why haven't you touched that one yet? And I'll be like, what do you mean? This is that style of image. I didn't think much of this image, but it has also grown on me. But again, going back to the images that you first saw me show from early on, these images are so very different than that style. And I think that that's important to recognize is that I'm putting things in my portfolio or at least separating them and working on them in ways that I probably wouldn't have a few years ago. Now, to go back to that style, we can talk about images like these that are saturated, have dynamics in them, but you can tell that this is just a much softer form of editing here in this image that I took in Norway. Uh, there's less light painting, it's less dark and moody or bright in different spots, and it just has a softer, more ethereal feel, and I think that generally, that's something that I would quantify as something I've grown into, is more subtle, um, more soft. And we'll talk about that more as we keep moving on. This is one of my favorite images from the whole year. And I love this image because like technically there's not really a lot of contrast, but I really feel like this image shows you that you can expose your image as bright as you want it to be. This one just, it has this feeling for me. It almost feels like a snow globe or someone's shaking up the image and you're living in this winter wonderland. And it just puts me in that spot. Like this image feels cold. It feels something. Uh, and if you go back and look at my earlier images, I probably would have edited this more, maybe not left it so bright. You know, I would have painted more light into the right. I don't necessarily know, but I just, I know that this style, this is something I really have enjoyed taking this year. And it's one I look back on, and I think it's actually the background on my laptop right now because I still enjoy looking at it. Let's move a little quicker. This one, also subtle, simple, almost a film-like look. We have more images with some dynamics in them, but none of them look like some of those earlier images I showed you from my earlier career, right? So like a lot of these images don't resemble that style. But when I am given conditions in that way, I still take images of that style. So obviously these images that I took of the Aurora have far more dynamics than they have bright greens and not that I painted a lot of light in here, but they pop out. These are the kind of images that make you stop on a social media post whereas the other ones are far more subtle and don't grab your attention as much. Most importantly, I took this image, which is for my project, my after image project that deals with spreading my dad's ashes around the world. This was a spot I specifically went back to Norway to do. The whole reason I was there was to do exactly this. And I wanted to talk about that just for a second because it was really important and it didn't happen until like the second to last day. And I actually genuinely didn't think I was gonna see the Aurora, but we got it on that last day we got some nice images, and most importantly, I got this one. Actually, this one isn't fully edited. Um, only the other two are. Moving away from Norway, we spent a lot of time photographing waterfalls. And something, this one is really interesting because I actually edited this very little. I didn't light paint this very much. The dynamics in this image were like this in real life. And I bring this up because this is one of my favorite images from the year. I actually took this on my birthday, fun fact. Um, but most importantly, what's important about it is that if you go back and look at some of my earlier images, especially this one, just look at the way this waterfall is edited. And I will hint you in that the original image for this doesn't look like this. I painted all the light into this. This shadow area here is fake. So all of the light and all the dynamics in this, uh, I did, I edited it in, because I had a lot of fun doing it at the time. And this particular image is edited way less. Um, if you're watching my live streams recently, you know that I just, I don't spend a lot of time editing images as much as I used to. So this is another great example. This is a super simple image. I don't think this was in any video. And uh, this one has grown on me through the year. I still don't know how I feel about it. I don't know what I want to do with it, but I would love to know what you think if you like this image down below. A simple layered image from Smoky Mountains. Let's see, what else do we want to take a look at? Oh, these are important. These are important because this image is very akin to my earlier style. And that's kind of what I want to get at is that it's not as if I don't take those images anymore. They're still in that toolbox of things I know how to do and things I've learned how to do. And both of these are taken on the same day, same style of images. You've got that nice sunburst. You've got, I didn't focus stack this actually. Somehow at F16, enough of this is in focus, even though I'm pretty close, um, that I didn't have to focus stack it, which is very nice because that saves me time editing. But it is very reminiscent of images like these, right? Um, but I will say, I don't think I spent a ton of time editing this, but I definitely spent more time editing it than my other images that you've seen so far, for sure. Um, one of my favorite images, well, this is a great 
this one has a great story. I think that this photo, not super great in terms of like the quality or anything, but the fact that I got to see this in Virginia, this is 80 miles from Washington, DC, which is just absolutely absurd. And I love this story because I would not have known about this if it wasn't for my Discord community. People were talking about my Discord. I drove up, I tried to capture some images. I got to experience it all the way in Virginia near Washington, DC. And that was super memorable, super cool. One of my favorite images of the year. Most of you have never seen this image because I took it just on the side of the road. Um, I wasn't filming a video at the time for it. I believe this is somewhere in Pennsylvania. But this is absolutely one of my top three, top five images from this year. And again, super simple. I didn't do much editing on this before and after. This is the before untouched. This is the after. That's the whole edit. And I think that that's uh, really important to discern is that my editing has become lighter. Um, I've also been looking at things differently. So I think the key here to, to really think about is I have the tools to do the edits that I wanna do, but the thing that's growing is really my eye. I, I'm looking for things more, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit because right around this time I start to branch out. And I didn't include a lot of images in here because I didn't film videos for it, but there's some, there's some stuff in here where I spent a lot of time doing things that um, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just taking the photos just so I could look at them on my computer and be like, did this work or not work? So we had a few more waterfall photos. I like these. These are nice, softer images. Again, not painting a bunch of light in, just doing what felt natural for the image. Uh, another image for my dad's project, after image. This was taken in Canada at Lakeside Park. Um, it's a rush reference. Long story short, had to get this one in. This is probably the most important thing that I did all year in terms of photography, even though it mostly means just to me than more than anyone else. Um, but I had to include that. So I'm gonna skip over these. Um, this I'm gonna point out just because it is reminiscent. It does have a lot of those dynamics and super high brights and darks and color. Feels very reminiscent of the few photos that I showed you from earlier on. But let's get to this one because I didn't make a video about this and I have I have multiple days of catalogs of images of these random leaves I was shooting, random colors coming through, shadows on the leaves, and just looking at stuff like this, where there's just something about trying to see the world differently through the same lenses that I've been shooting with, if you will. And I was really trying to branch out, all pun intended, and expand my stuff to new photos, new styles of images, and it was completely out of my comfort zone. I actually didn't film anything for these days uh, because it's not that I didn't want to look like an idiot. Well, I mean, who wants to look like an idiot? I do that all the time, but I didn't know what I was going to do or say. Like, I didn't film anything and because I was like, what am I going to... I'm just going to be like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to shoot these, <laughs> these leaves up here and hope that it works. And I have made a point of that in videos. I've said, hey, I'm shooting outside of my comfort zone. I don't know if this is going to work. So I'm gonna set that up, try to take the shot. I'm really not sure if it's gonna work, but it just caught my eye when I was standing here filming this. So let's just at least try it, shall we? Um, but that's always a trade-off, right? Because uh, let's, I'm gonna be completely blunt here. People watch this channel, hopefully with the confidence that I'm gonna teach them something or I'm gonna at least act in a way that they can learn something from. And if people tune in and all I'm doing is acting like I don't know what I'm doing and I have no confidence in myself, a lot of people are gonna garner information from that. So I have to balance that vulnerability with uh, also talking about things that I'm like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do, I know exactly how I'm gonna edit this image and that's it. But I, I do like to show the real sides of things is that even though I do this every day and I took images, God, there was a period from, I wanna say July to October where it felt like I shot almost every single day where I still go out and try things that I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do them well or or I'm just developing my eye to be like, okay, this worked and this didn't work. And the only way to do that is to shoot the photos and try. That was an example, and I have more of that down here. I must have shot these stupid waves crashing uh, and in with intentional camera movement, using my camera by zooming in and out. I, I must have days of catalogs of stuff like this or days of different light hitting different waves that I haven't included in here, but I did include these four images just to show you that I was trying new things. None of these are in videos, and I put these in here because this was stuff that I was trying, and I still don't know how I feel about them because I haven't developed that confidence in the images. Um, but there was, there were, those were things I was trying. 
uh, especially something like this. This was a little bit different. And I, I did include this in a video. These are all from Acadia National Park. A lot of the images I was shooting in Acadia are actually very different than what I normally shoot. But I think we're getting to a point where some of the stuff that is here that I'm showing you is just part of my style now. When I go back and look at some of my stuff from the most recent years, this particular image, for example, has this weird painterly feeling to it. It's almost like a watercolor. And I really like it, but I haven't, I haven't, it hasn't sat with me long enough to be like, oh, I want to put this in my portfolio or I want to see it in print. I don't even think I put it in a video. But it's really interesting to see images like this and go back and look at images like this that I was taking early on to see that this was my goal. These images that you're seeing here from 2017, 2018, 2019, these were like, this is it. This is what hits me with dopamine. This is, this is what I'm out here for. And now I feel like the times that I capture images like this or that I challenge myself to do something that I don't know how to do or I don't know what I'm doing or I don't know what the results are going to be, this is the kind of thing that I shoot it and I'm like, I get it back and I'm like, yeah, this is nice. This is that subtle ethereal feeling that I'm looking for. And I think that's really important as a photographer is questioning yourself and wondering, is what you're shooting making you happy? Because that's really what matters. It's like, don't shoot for anyone else. Shoot for you and shoot for what's making you happy, what's giving you joy, and uh, what's giving you fulfillment in your work. This is another super subtle image. I don't even know if I have fully edited this image yet, but I just want to include it because I thought it was really cool. This is one that I was going back through my catalogs and I forgot that I took. This one I haven't even edited yet. Like it has edits on it, but uh, this happened probably one of the last nights I was in Acadia. Again, big, giant, wide image, very reminiscent of earlier stuff. And I'm kind of bringing those up because like these next three are very uh, much like my early images, but this is probably one of my best images I took all year. This might be, I would put this in my top three, maybe number one. Uh, this was a special morning. I had spent a month trying to get conditions like this in Acadia National Park. And again, this is reminiscent of earlier images, but I edited this way less. Like for example, this one kind of reminds me of, let's just take a look at this one. But this one has, this one's from Norway is focus stacked with light painting. I sky replaced it with a sky from earlier so that it would look better. And like I put all these, this little, I added the red and these reflections and just made it look super, super intense, super eye grabbing and perfect, if you will. Whereas this one is literally just one image aside from blending a darker exposure for the clouds. I even submitted this to the natural landscape photography contest. And I'm really proud of it because it felt like, I don't know if editing mattered, but I think it was the payoff for all the time that I wanted something like this from Acadia and just never got it. Fog, sunlight, nice tones, finally got it. That's why this one's in here. And then we're gonna go back to uh, more subtle stuff. Like for example, I have this one in here, even though it has the sun in it, I just love the red sand on the beach. This is actually in my 2024 calendar, uh, but more subtle stuff. I mean, this stuff is super subtle. This is very abstract stuff. And I even talked about these images in the video that I made about shooting abstracts in Nova Scotia and talked about how I was branching out and doing things that I wouldn't normally do. Uh, this is a nice subtle one. I just love the pastel feeling in this. Also, this is not internal camera movement. This is a really cool image because it is long exposure at six seconds, but the tides here, because this is in the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, are so fast that that bottom glassy-like surface on the bottom is actually just from the movement of the water, not internal camera movement. So then we went to Newfoundland and Newfoundland, obviously I struggled a bit in Newfoundland photography wise, but also felt very rewarded in Newfoundland photography wise. More abstracts, more drone photos, more stuff that's a little bit different and keep branching out into new things. We still took images like a big saturated grand images on the wide angle lens. But things that I really caught my eye were moments, were memories. This video, if you guys caught it, was very important. Um, that was definitely, man, I, I love going back and watching that particular video or moments of it because it always reminds me of just like, th those are true feelings. Like I, I'm like, I remember being elated to finally have something like this happen in the spot that I kept going back over and over and over again. Barely edited, by the way, these images barely touched. Like if we go in here uh, and there's not, there's barely anything. These are the lightest. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not, I did not do much to these images at all. Just brought the exposure down, stuff like that. But we still took 
some nice saturated images. We still took some big images when it was appropriate. And I think that's the important thing is when I go back and look at my early stuff, um, I would take images and then just make it work, right? I would edit things in, I would take different times and blend them together and that was really fun and I liked the results. But I've changed now to just being like, what is in front of me? What am I gonna capture in front of me? And sometimes that requires being at a place for 10 days in a row waiting for these conditions because I have that ability to, I have, I have the time. And um, that's a privilege, honestly, living on the road and being able to shoot that way. Um, I included this one in here because I just love the geometry of this. There's this line that goes through the image like this uh, with the house there and then the top line. And I just love the way the, the ground naturally breaks up things and the, the shapes in this image created by all the stuff going on in it. And that's why I included it. This is uh, one, there was no video for this. This is just in Lawn and Meadows up in the northern part of Newfoundland. I just liked it because it's very subtle. Um, again, barely edited. I, I bet if I come over here and look at my edit, <laughs> this is it. That's all I did. I removed this little thing here. Um, yeah, barely touched that. And I just love that soft tone, that soft feel. Simple images. That's definitely, I think, uh, probably, if I had to describe one word this year, simple. And then to wrap up the year, we shot some fall color change images that I'm not totally in love with, mostly because I just got there a little bit too late, but I still like these images. These are pretty recent from my channel. I think some of the better ones I have are these really subtle images with these frosty bushes that I took in New River Gorge. Um, and I really like these images, <laughs> but again, simple, right? Like there's not a whole lot going on here in terms of the edit or the actual image. It's just a simple scene with a lot of really nice, beautiful light on it. And uh, it's less about my editing and emphasis on it and more about the scene in front of me. And then the last couple images are very dynamic images, very saturated eye-catching style images. But if we go and look at these images in the edit, um, they're not super edited. Uh, this is the, this cannot be the before. Let's go look at this one because it's not a, yeah, this is the before, this is the after. Oh, I did get rid of a car in this one. So I guess technically that's a decent amount of editing, but not really. All right, so that was 2023, but more importantly, that was a really good deep dive into talking about what has changed or how I've grown this year as a photographer versus the previous years. And I think the important thing here to remember is like, it's not, I can't necessarily say that I've gotten better at or worse as a photographer. I mean, I hope I haven't gotten worse, but I think the important thing is that I'm still shooting the stuff I know. I'm still using the tools in my toolbox when the moments arise to do that and bring them out when it makes sense. But I'm also pushing myself to try and take photos that are outside of my comfort zone. I'm trying to do things that I don't know how to do and learn from it or learn from the mistakes that I'm making so that my eyes see the world a little bit differently. Because I think, like me, a lot of you guys probably feel the same way where you feel uninspired or stagnant in your work. And maybe it'd be really good to look at your work and say, how do I wanna improve in this next year? How do I wanna improve in 2024? And that might come from just taking a look at your older work or your work now and seeing where you've gone and how you got there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a lot of fun for me. I, a lot of the fun comes from going through and going back through my catalog and seeing a lot of the images that I took because right this moment when I was making and starting this out, I was like, did I even really get much this year? And then I go back and look, I'm like, okay, I got way more than I remember. So that's always fun. So thank you for joining me along for that. And thank you for being here this year. Thank you for all your support. Uh, and thank you for just commenting, tuning in, hitting the like button, you know, all of that stuff. But it's really just nice having your faces here. Oh man, I just messed up the audio with my watch. It doesn't matter. It's the end of the video. I'll see you on the next one. It's gotta be a rainbow out there somewhere. We just gotta go find them. Later.